I have tremendous news for the rest of the NHL. The Pittsburgh Penguins aren't in the playoffs this year. As the rest of the league celebrates the end of the streak, the only way for them to get into the arena is to buy a ticket. Word of advice, the resale market's the only way to get in. And if you do, SeatGeek, the sponsor of this video, can help you out there. It's an app that aggregates all tickets on the resale market, and unlike the Penguins, they do so without fail. It sorts all tickets from red to green on a 1 to 10 scale and offers a sneak peek from where you'll be sitting. And don't forget to use the code TREE in the link below to save 20 bucks off your first purchase. It unfortunately will not solve the Pens mess of a situation, but SeatGeek will help them get to some playoff games if they want. Now on to the salt. To reach the pinnacle of hockey is a beautiful thing. You spend years trying to get there, shedding embarrassing failures and bad moves, and then something just clicks. You stumble into a true identity. Everything you touch turns to gold. No matter what's thrown at you, the players respond and play their hearts out. To be blessed with not just one, but multiple cups in a window is a rare sight. And you never want the euphoria to end. But as they all say, what goes up must come down. Could you at least not make it so predictable? At least go down with a fucking fight, not just go through the motions of a pretend contender. Don't be mistaken, this was not an overnight collapse. This is the result of years upon years of fuck-ups. I'll show you right now. No, you went a little too far, go a few days later. There's your patient zero move. Trading a first round pick in Oscar Sundquist for a fourth liner in Ryan Reeves in second rounder. It was terrible from the time it was announced. Because a team that won back-to-back -back cups on speed and youth needed to get older and slower and punchier. At least it would have if Mike Sullivan bothered to play him in a non-goon role. He never fit the system. And how could you if you're only playing seven minutes a night? You'd be flipped to Vegas at the deadline. I know they got a second round pick in the deal as well. The kid they drafted with it was derailed by concussions. It's a sad wash. Slowly but surely, the identity that was forged would drift away from them. Jim Rutherford refused to go out on top after 2017. And he was being haunted by Tom Wilson in his sleep. Everything had been done to try and one-up the boogeyman himself. Until one day in 2021. JR had a bitch fit after the team told him he could no longer trade everything in sight. No, you can't refinance the house for flurry, silly. So he took the ball he traded for three times and went home. Little did he know at the time he could have had him the next offseason for absolutely nothing. The Pens needed a new management core. And quickly. It took two weeks of searching, but they had their new men in tow. Ron Hextall and Brian Burke. The visionless figurehead of Philly and a man who hadn't accomplished shit in the NHL in almost 15 years? Well, you have to try and be positive about it. Hextel was held back by the voice club of Philly? Burke did things 20 years ago? Fuck. What they inherited was a burned out husk of a franchise, but the foundations were intact. Crosby, Malkin, and Latang were still here. They had a few young pieces from those cup runs. Gensel, Rost, Dumoulin, and some decent depth, but little else. The farm was barren after years of trades. The team was getting slower and older. Goaltending went from a strength to an Achilles heel. With nothing else to help out, the old core couldn't carry like they used to. Downfall went from feared to painful. And it led to five straight playoff series losses. In increasingly embarrassing fashion. Nobody wanted to admit it around here, but 2022 was their last shot. After yet another playoff failure, they were done. The 3-1 series lead they had was deceiving. Shostjurkin was off forming games 3 and 4, and the Pens were running on spicy pork and broccoli by that point. Fans would point to goaltending being the reason why they didn't go anywhere, but it wasn't the main concern. The team couldn't make zone entries on 5-on-3 on power plays. The roster design had become visionless. Team tactics were incredibly stale. Depth was gone and nothing was on the way. They needed to start rebuilding. And I'm not saying this after the fact, I was screaming this at the time. I don't care if Crosby's still playing at his peak. If you haven't made a deep run since the cup year, there's no evidence that they can do it again in an eight state. I will always cherish the cups, but you need to know when to pull the plug. They didn't. Penn saw those shiny trinkets in front of them and kept the gang around, which was a terrible mistake. They may be below market value, but the real cost is in the term on those deals. Tang signed until he's 41 and Malkin until he's 40. Rust and Raquel are gonna be 35 when they're done and their speed will have faded before then. They've doomed themselves by locking everyone up. They've become the Red Wings of the mid-2010s. The 
Troy kept the gang around for way too long as well. They had a playoff streak to maintain too. What did it get them? A one-way ticket to hell. But what's done is done, might as well make the most of it. It would be up to the new execs to compliment Pittsburgh's last gasp. I just have one question before we begin, Mr. Burke. What do you do here? Really, I don't know if you're just here to shake hands or tell those legendary stories in the owner's office. I get it, I love the one about Nalyaka Bob, but I don't know how that makes you more than a figurehead. While Burke's not the main star of the show, there's only one man for the job. And his name is Ron Hextall, master of the fence it. The idiot savant of unbelievable butchering. You want a plan? Oh no, my friends. It's up here. So ornate and complex that it literally cannot be transcribed into written form. He was a legend in Philadelphia, especially with his incredible resume as their GM. An illustrious, immaculate drafting and free agency record. Patience, boys. Let him cook. even worse because the core took short-term discounts to build a team around them. They stretched their deals out longer. For this! I forget Jan Root is even on the pens he's so obsolete here. In Ron Hextall's reign, the pens went from a team in desperate need of speed and youth to the oldest team in hockey. The risk in such a strategy in the modern NHL is ridiculously high. You'd have to hope every single thing goes right to even have a chance at a deep run. Things did not turn out that way. Brian Dumoulin fell off the face of a map. Big Daddy Jeff Carter lost his legs nearly overnight. The bottom six was as bad as it was back in 2014. Goaltending? You'd find better consistency in a goddamn tie-dye painting. Chris Letang had a nightmare season. His father died and he suffered a second stroke. Sammy Poulon took a leave of absence to take care of his mental health. They were a ridiculously erratic team. Going from shit to excellent to shit and back in the matter of three weeks. The only good surprise of the year was P.O. Joseph. That's about it. We couldn't see Ty Smith in the NHL for ages because Hextall botched the cap and defense situation so badly. There was a colossal disconnect between the executives and the coaching staff that the team suffered immensely. Mike Sullivan's not playing the young players? And bring in more old guys. Bonino, 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 Bonino for all of three games before he falls to a lacerated kidney. Dmitry Kulikov from the worst defense in hockey who also gets injured. And then Mikkel goddamn Granlund. Because why make your own decisions when the assistant GM can use his persuasion skill to help you make a great mistake? Because as Ronnie puts it, he really likes this team. In reality, they're a dull, lifeless, unlikable, and uninspired bunch that mirror the corporate atmosphere of PPG most nights. The core can't carry this boulder every single game these days. And it showed all season. Separate six and seven game losing streaks. Blowing leads like they were next to nothing. Incredible defensive lapses leading to golden opportunities in the slot every night. Not just losing against playoff contenders, but being crushed by them. Even then, you'd expect them to drag this out and make the playoffs, right? That's where the Pens revealed themselves to be a bad team, simply finding unbelievable ways to lose games. 
Try Against Ottawa, where they were stonewalled by Dylan Goddamn Ferguson. On emergency call-up. He was about to be sent to the ECHO weeks earlier. Add in losing to a Montreal Canadiens franchise that had been injured to hell and back because Tristan Jari can't make a save. The only consistency was failing to show up for 60, hell even 40 minutes most games. But the apex was to come. All they had to do was beat two of the worst teams in hockey and they continue the streak. Chicago and Columbus were openly tanking at this point. Their netminders were Peter Morazic and Michael Hutchinson. The Jackets literally had the equivalent of AI-generated players in their lineup for God's sake! A real team would dismantle them. The Pens lost both matches. In a must-win situation, Pittsburgh took the piss and missed the playoffs. The streak is over. It was for the best. They were getting their asses kicked by Boston if they made it. But this team fancied themselves as cup contenders! This isn't just failure. This is catastrophically horrible. Crosby and Malkin were healthy! They both played all 82 games for the first time combined in their careers! They were the fifth healthiest team in terms of man games lost all season. There's no excuse for this. None. In two years, Hextall committed the ultimate sin. He turned this team into the Flyers. The only choice is to purge and then keep purging. Burke Hextall and assistant GM Chris Pryor were deservedly canned, but they need to keep going. If you don't put some of the blame on Sully for what's happened this year, then you're not paying close enough attention. Sullivan's a good coach. And the right one at the right time back in 2016 and 17, but he's years past his expiration date here. He honestly should have been fired after that embarrassment in the bubble in 2020. The problem is Mike succeeded because he brought up the boys he coached in Wilkes-Barre and infused youth and speed into the lineup. He no longer has that connection, yet he's trying to coach this team like it's still 2016. They're not constructed to play that style of game anymore. I don't care if you still have that core. Note how many players haven't only performed well since leaving the Pens, but have outright thrived. Jared McCann wasn't emerging like this in Pittsburgh. Sully would still be chucking him in low leverage situations. I don't care if you come out nearly every press conference and say you outplayed the other team. You still fucking lost by two goals. The entire coaching staff needs to go as well, but that isn't going to happen. New Penn's ownership simulated laissez-faire economics and left them to die this year. And even if Fenway says there'll be more hands on, they're still enamored with Sullivan and still think they're contenders. Let me spell it out for you. Crosby, Malkin, and Latang are still very good players, but they aren't the talents they used to be. Who of these three could you still argue is a franchise caliber talent? Crosby, probably, but no one else. You can't look me in the eye and tell me you could go on another deep run with this goal. Not with how this past season went. Not with these stale tactics. Not with this lack of depth. And not with years of draining draft capital on bad trades and bad drafting. The issue for me isn't in the team decline. All things must come to an end and every empire eventually falls. What pisses me off is the fact that you could see this shit coming from a mile away and they still sprinted headfirst off a ledge. This was a team that was the envy of the league six years ago. But Jim Rutherford set the franchise on fire for reasons of paranoia. The team and its brass sat around and watched him do it until it was far too late. And then Ron Hextall came in and just threw lithium all over the place. It's a fucking mess. And I know everyone's gonna say, well, the Pens should just rebuild and shut you up for once. Here's the neat thing. You can't. Nearly all of the cores locked up long-term on either unmovable contracts or as some form of a no-trade clause. The chance to step off this train was last offseason. And now it's running at full speed towards mediocrity. Cut Jeff Carter? Can't. His contract's buyout proof. Trade Brian Rust? Can't. He's on a full new movement clause for the next two seasons. You'd have to retain salary or give up draft picks to move Grenland to Ruda. Who in free agency or trade is going to revive this team? With the lack of youth in the system, you'd have a better chance of drawing water from a rock. I figured it'd be a season or two before it became reality, but they really have become the new Red Wings. And they've earned a one-way ticket to hell itself. Perhaps they'll finally realize the dream is up, but considering the brass is eager to put their heads in the sand, I fear they're gonna do something insanely idiotic. Like, say, trade Jake Gensel to clear up space to extend Jason Zucker long-term. Or move more futures for JT Miller or John Gibson. Yeah, that'll work out swimmingly. Well, we all enjoyed the good times. We get to be entitled little shits and want more food from Lord Stanley's table. Now we go down with the ship. The rest of the NHL will have no sympathy for our plight. I don't blame them. By Evgeny Malkin, and again down to Tristan Jari. A steal! Josh Bailey scores! Josh Bailey on the turnover! 